<laughs> hey, everybody, and welcome back to For the Booze. For the Booze. For the Booze. May I say, you're looking mighty fine today. Thank you. It's so hot. Ooh, you're looking pretty good yourself, babe. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> but we are back. Uh, we are finally going to do this location. It has been Yay! requested two times now. I know. Two. So, I mean, we usually do it off of one. Yeah. So since there's two, we're going to do it. Now two. Yeah. <laughs> um, this goes out to your friend, Lindsay, That's and right. to Mikey, who both asked us to do this. We are mm-hmm. headed down, down to the desert, Ugh. to the dusty, <laughs> snake-ridden, lizard-filled, hot, just uh, hot, Yeah, Arizona. Yep. Arizona. I've never been there, but I'm just going by what I've been told. Yeah. And we are going to check out the Jerome Grand Hotel. I'm excited for this one. Um, It's an interesting place. There's a lot of information about this place. This was honestly... It's a good thing. This was a very refreshing one to do because lately, I mean, if you watch these videos and, and listen to this podcast, you know, like, I've been struggling. Mm-hmm. I've been having a hard time finding, you know, information about places, yeah. but this was not like that at all. I found so much stuff... I mean, this could have been a super long episode. Yeah. I Very And I, I know a little bit about it. Lindsay was telling me, like, it was something before it was a hotel and, like, it we'll was. get into all that. It was a couple things before yeah. it was a hotel. <laughs> so I know a little bit about this one already. Oh. I know. What was it before a hotel? They'll find out. <laughs> let's, uh, let's jump into this one. Okay. I'm ready. Jerome is a town in the Black Hills of Yavape County. I think that's how you pronounce that, I'm pretty sure. In the U.S. state of Arizona. Founded in the late 19th century on Cleopatra Hill overlooking the Verde Valley, Jerome is more than 5,000 feet above sea level. So this is like a mountain desert place. Oh, okay. It's on, like, I know I kind of went into this kind of giving it some some crap, but <sighs> it's actually kind of nice. It's, oh, it's like a nice area? It, think of it as if we looked outside here, but instead of green, you saw desert. Just like a deserty mountain. The crap, yeah. crap mountains. Oh, okay. it looks like that. People won't understand that, but yeah. you will. It looks like that, but maybe a little more deserty. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll throw well, up a picture of what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, for anybody who doesn't know, we ha- we're in the town we live in is literally just surrounded by mountains. We're and, in like a bowl of mountains, yeah. and then there's these lush, green, beautiful mountains like three quarters of the way around, and then the other like little bit is just these much browner, well, a lot more less de- trees. It's more deserty. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit more deserty. So we call them the crap mountains. Yeah, <laughs> but that was before we actually went out and ventured to true. see them because we went out to see them. We were like, "Whoa, this is actually really, really? cool. This is super cool." Yeah. The Hohokam were the first people known to have lived and farmed near Jerome from 700 to 1125. Wow. This place goes way back, farther wow. than I thought. Okay. Now later, long before the arrival of Europeans, it is likely that other native peoples mined the united verde ore body for the colorful copper-bearing minerals malachite and azurite. Hmm. Interesting. Which I'm pretty sure we have some upstairs. The first Europeans to arrive in the area were the Spanish conquistadors. At the time, the area was part of New Mexico, and the Spaniards often organized silver and gold prospecting expeditions in the area. In 1585, Spanish explorers made note of the ore, but they didn't mine it because their government had sent them to find gold and silver, not copper. Mm. So they knew it was there. Yeah. The area became part of Mexico when Mexico gained its independence from Spain in 1821 and part of the United States by terms of the 1848 Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, which concluded the Mexican-American War. The war's major consequence was the Mexican secession of the northern territories of Alta California and Santa Fe de Nuevo, Mexico, to the United States. I nailed that. (laughs) <laughs> Good job. <laughs> the Jerome Grand Hotel in Arizona, USA, is a historic landmark which towers above the Verde Valley. This place is old. Mm. Well, the hotel itself isn't old. The building is. Well, the building and definitely the area. Yeah. but The, the hotel is a lot newer than you would think. Mm. The hotel, I mean, we'll, I don't want to give it away. It's way, we were both already, we weren't adults. We weren't quite teenagers. Uh, okay. Well, I was, but you weren't. <laughs> the hotel hasn't been around that long. It's really weird. Interesting. Now, Angus McKinnon and Morris A. Ruffner 
filed the first copper mining claims at this location in 1876. In 1880, Frederick A. Triddle, the governor of Arizona Territory, and Frederick F. Thomas, a mining engineer from San Francisco, bought these claims from the original owners. In 1883, with the aid of Eastern financiers, including James A. McDonald and Eugene Jerome of New York City, they created the United Verde Copper Company. The small adjacent mining camp on Cleopatra Hill was named Jerome in honor of Eugene Jerome, who became the company secretary. All this is going to make sense why I'm, I'm telling everybody this. Okay. It, it, will, it will make sense in okay. the end. United Verde built a small smelter at Jerome and constructed wagon roads from it to Prescott, the Verde Valley, and the Atlantic and Pacific Railroad Depot to Ash Fork. However, transport by wagon was very expensive, and in late 1884, after the price of copper had fallen by 50%, the company ceased all operations at the site. 50%? Wow. I thought the mining didn't go on as into the modern day as you would think. Okay. It stopped quite a long time ago. I mean, and with a drastic drop like that, I could absolutely see it just like halting. And this is That's crazy. This at the especially at the time. This is the town's I'm not gonna say it's its main like uh business. It is mm-hmm. the town's business. Right. This is all this town revolved around. Mm-hmm. So when mining went away, you could only imagine what happened. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's like when the space center went away from the area where yeah, we lived this, in for this, a while. Think about this is a much smaller scale. Yeah, and this town was once. I'm going to get into it, but this town was once a very a very bustling town, hmm. and it's not anymore. That's sad. Now, four years later, William A. Clark, who had made a fortune in mining and commercial ventures in Montana, bought the United Verde properties and, among other improvements, enlarged the smelter. He's the one that we want to pay attention to. Okay. The United Verde Hospital was constructed in 1926 to replace the old hospital constructed in 1970, when a fault shift due to blasting caused significant damage to the hospital south wing as well as the Jerome High School. Once patients and equipment were moved to the new hospital in January 1927, the wing was removed uh, with some major remodeling became the clubhouse building and still stands minus the south wing. The Jerome High School, however, was beyond repair and torn down. An additional major building, the United Verde Apartments, was missed by one foot from being damaged by the same fall. One foot? One foot. One single foot. Like 12 inches. I wonder how they even measure that, honestly. Wow. That's crazy. That's what I was wondering when I was reading this originally was, you know, how did they measure it was just... One, I, I don't know. Right. Maybe, maybe they just went up to the, the last point of damage. I don't <sighs> maybe, know. Maybe, yeah, maybe I don't I'm know. focusing on them too much. I don't know. <laughs> now, the strange location for the hospital was due to the known stability of the ground. Not wanting another incident like before, the building plans are dated back to February 1926, and the building was opened in January 1927. It was a very quick. Yeah. This isn't the same building. It's a brand new building. Wow. That was fast. The new United Verde Hospital took full advantage of the cutting-edge technology of its time. It was both fireproof and immune to earthquakes, which I find a marveling feat for the time, honestly. Now, it also featured patient call lights, balconies, sun porches, emergency backup lighting, Otis self-service elevator, ice-making room, laboratories, x-ray, major and minor surgical facilities, men's, women's, and children's wards, private and semi-private rooms, blanket warming closets, and housing for some staff. That is a lot for the 1920s. I looked, I was like, what is an Otis service elevator? Do you know what that is? I have no idea. It's a regular elevator. What? And it's based here in Utah. No way. And they have been around for like 120 years. So this is an elevator like we think of an elevator. Yeah. Which I was like, wow. wow, that's incredible. I thought it was going to be some like old timey, like you had to pull them up by a rope. Yeah. <laughs> like an old dumbbell waiter or something. Not. Yeah. It's not. And I guess they're pretty renowned for being an extremely high end, reliable elevator. Wow. That's amazing. And they still use the same elevator, I believe, to this day. That's so cool. In 1930, it was considered the most modern hospital in Arizona and possibly the Western states. William Clark used this as just another marketing tool to attract the best employees, good housing, great schools, and top medical care available. 
So William Clark, I read all that in the beginning because he is the one who basically turned this into a state-of-the-art facility. Wow. And he was a rich guy from Montana. Good on you, sir. Uh, and this hospital, from what I understand, was... I, I don't know why they said just in the Western states. It really sounds like it may have just been the best hospital Especially in the country. Especially for the time, too. Yeah, I mean, The it's, time is like the late 1920s. Like, you don't and, think of all of those things being around then. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just That's like almost full hospital amenities now. Even though I saw, like, elevator and stuff, I saw, um, like, patient call lights, and I was like, was that even, a, was that even available then? <laughs> right. Because that seems very high-tech for the time. Mm-hmm. William A. Clark was a successful businessman in diverse areas. Now, Clark was one of America's copper kings, and although characterized as a man of, quote, not of tender conscience, he was truly a visionary. He was not a nice guy. Mm. Yeah, he's rich. Now, he built a closely held financial empire based on mining that not only rivaled any of his uh, contemporaries, but withstood the financial panics of the day. Clark developed the United Verde Mine in Jerome, his influence in Arizona continues to be felt through his namesake, the town of Clarksdale. Clarkdale is is because of him. Wow. And that's a, I don't know if you know Clarkdale, but. It's, I've, I've heard it, of Yeah, Clarkdale. of course. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. So, I mean, he his name is still around in Arizona today. Wow. That's amazing. Now, the building, when constructed, was originally equipped with three boilers. The 50-horsepower Kawani low-pressure steam boiler for heat is actually still being used today. What? That's the only reason I left that in here. Oh my god! Because I was like, "Dang, man, that must be a, that must be one hell of a piece of equipment." Yeah, they still use it to this day. That's crazy. Phelps Dodge Mining Corp. acquired the United Verde Jerome Mine Holdings in 1935 and continued to operate the United Verde Hospital until it it closed in 1950. So, this is what I'm saying. This is when. The hospital was maintained fully furnished for approximately 20 years, after which Phelps Dodge knew it would never be used as a hospital in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to get through that because in 1953, the mining left the town. It just stopped and left. What? Which I find, I don't know why. I, I don't really know why. I think they just stopped copper mining like you weren't allowed to. I don't know. But this town, I thought I left it in here at one point during its heyday, had like four, 4,500 people that lived in it. And then by the end, it had it like, it has like 400. So this went from a giant, wow, like not giant, that is a drastic but, but it went from like a big bustling town to like a ghost town. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, that's like 4,000 people. Yeah, because Just, the mining... Oof. The mining dried up, um, but they they maintained it fully. They left everything in it and kept it maintained mm -hmm. because I think they thought they were going to either sell it or reopen it as a hospital again. Yeah, um, I don't think they ever did, though. Now, during its time as the United Verde Hospital, an estimated 9,000 deaths occurred. However, no known records are present, so that number has yet to be validated. Mm. Most of the furnishings were removed in 1970 and 1980s. Uh, and Phelps Dodge would, over time, hire a live-in caretaker or lease it to a family just to keep it occupied and safe from vandals. Now, after the suicide of Manoa Hafpower, Hafpayer, I can't say that, <laughs> the last caretaker in the 1980s who was found hanging in the engineer's room, the building was boarded up and watched over by the local police and small staff still at the Phelps Dodge headquarters in Jerome. So that's th wow. 30 years they kept it open furnished and made sure somebody was living in it taking care of it mm -hmm. why i have no idea why would you do that i don't it cost money no that costs money there's still upkeep if right. if everything's still yeah, on you've got a full it's a full hospital mm -hmm. the jerome grand hotel is not small and it's that building it's huge that's crazy so i i just can't wrap my head around why they why they would have done this honestly like when it's not a functioning hotel or, I mean, uh, hospital. hospital. Yeah. yeah. But you know, how weird would it be to live there? Yeah. Like in a ginormous place that still has like hospital A stuff hospital in it? where they think 9,000 people died? <laughs> Record keeping people. Record keeping. <laughs> this is old mining town though. I'm not, I'm not surprised. Now, while some vandalism did occur over time, this added an incentive for liability reasons for Phelps Dodge to sell the dilapidated building. In December 1993, an offer to purchase was made by Larry Alter of Phoenix, Arizona, 
and possession was taken May 29, 1994. Larry Alter still owns and operates the Jerome Grand Hotel. This wow. hotel has only been there since 94. Wow. I was like 13 when when they made it the Grand Hotel from a hospital. That's crazy. I thought the hotel was going to go way back. Like way back, yeah. But they didn't. I mean. The hospital sure did. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's weird. But I don't know. I just, for some reason, I thought. When everybody was like, do the Jerome Grand Hotel, it was going to be like this 100-year-old hotel. <laughs> I understand it's a 100-year-old building. Right. I expected it to be like a hotel. A running hotel the whole time, yeah. In 2003, an added fixture to the building was and still is parked in the hotel garage. The 1928 Springfield Rolls-Royce Phantom One Lonsdale has been driven to Phoenix, Flagstaff, Prescott, and Sedona is in the, and is now only used for parades or shows. Whoa. They bought this old Rolls Royce and it's sweet. That is so cool. And it's kind of like the mascot of the hotel. Wow. It's really neat. It's really oh, such a nice car. Mm. The car in its original condition for the most part and sports a Brewster body. It has just under 93,000 miles and was made in America. Rolls Royce produced cars in Springfield, Massachusetts for 10 years, saving import fees on their cars from England and providing the U.S. with the steering wheel on the, quote, correct side. Ah, <laughs> okay. That's an American-made Rolls Royce out of yeah. Springfield. It's wow. so neat. Now, the hotel didn't come without challenges, of course. Jerome was just not that busy in 94 and very seasonal on top of that. The beginning of Hill Street, leaving Highway 89A to the hotel, starts out as a two-way, single-lane road and located one level above the sometimes busy Main Street where 99% of the shops and our sometimes opened restaurants were located. Now, the Palace Restaurant, now Haunted Hamburger, was opened in 1994 and is located across from Hill Street. This was the first restaurant serving lunch and dinner to have dependable hours and was the first to start attracting people. So there was like nothing. The haunted hamburger? Yeah, they call it the haunted <laughs> hamburger. That's funny. And people go there and they, I think there are some like accounts of people saying it's haunted. It's an old mining town, so this doesn't really surprise me. Yeah, <laughs> we've done mining towns and stuff like that before and there always just seems to be this... A lot of people died. Thing, you know? People were blown yeah. up and you know trapped in mines and uh, murdered mm. i mean mining towns weren't really known for mining being great places dangerous very super dangerous uh, but the haunted hamburger i love that i do too i want a hamburger <laughs> from there i do too. i actually looked up how far away this place was from us it's eight and a half hour drive that's not that bad now on top of that few people drove in 1926 when the hospital was built and only 12 parking spaces were provided over 1,000 dump truck loads were excavated to make the now 70 spaces for the hotel and restaurant. So 12, there's, I think, 70, so 70 rooms at the hotel. Mm -hmm. There was 12 parking spaces. Well, nobody really had that many cars and stuff back then. No, I know, so but I get it, how but... hard would it be to, like, start a hotel with 12 parking spots? Yeah. Oh, we can only have 12 people stay and you all have to drive in the same vehicle. Now, excavation was done during the first two years of renovation, and it wasn't until July 1996 when the first rooms were ready and the building opened. In 1997, the Grand View Restaurant and Lounge were open, but it soon became apparent that leasing the restaurant was a better plan, and in 2003, the Asylum Restaurant was opened and is still in business today. The Asylum Restaurant. I love all these they names. Real, they lean into the... Uh, the paranormal here. Yeah, obviously. Because the paranormal uh, accounts, they go back a ways. Ooh. They didn't just start at okay. the hotel. Another big negative was the building just looked spooky. In an effort to complete construction on time, the original colored veneer stucco was applied too soon and lime bleached through, making the exterior look 100 years old when it was brand new. Wow. Now, located high up the mountain, set aside by itself with the operating windows facing hill street added to the frankensteinish appearance which some people actually loved but wasn't great for a hotel mm -hmm. well i don't i don't know why it was a problem because like i looked at the views from the rooms okay now i don't know which like which side of the hotel i was seeing out of when mm -hmm. i was looking at these pictures but the balcony was like set and you were looking at the slope of the mountain going down Ooh. But you were like facing it. Uh, it. It looked really neat. 
That's I, cool. It had a good view, in, yeah. my, in my opinion. I guess it's going to be very subjective to everybody. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I thought it was a very cool view. It was very different, uh, but it was nice. I liked it. Heck yeah. Now, original colors for the stucco, windows, and doors were used, and the awnings were added in 2006, giving a more inviting appearance. Because it was taken care of for so many years and built to last, after the renovation, it can be said that the hotel is the best preserved building in Arizona and actually continues to this day. Wow. That's so cool. So, I mean, the Jerome Grand Hotel, I keep, I don't know why I'm having a hard time saying that. I think it's because it's like JG, JG. Um, but the Grand Hotel, if you look up pictures, you'll see kind of like the front of it. Mm-hmm. I don't mean like the front of the building. I just mean like the front where you walk in. And it's set up weird. It's set up to where you're, it looks like you're walking into the side of the building, not the front of the building. Because huh. the front of the building would either be going downhill or uphill. Okay, so, so it's you like long. Do have to come in to from the side? Yeah, so okay. it's like long, but that is the main entrance. But I just think it's weird. It, to me, it's weird looking because when I first looked this up, I was like, "This is a tiny hotel." Because mm. I just see the front of it. Yeah. yeah, so I'm like, "Man, this is a super small hotel." And then I found more pictures, obviously, of the rest of it, and it's like set up like a longhouse style, like Vikings. Okay, and I was like, "Man, okay, this is a really big hotel," but it's just. It's very, it, it's, it tricks your brain. Mm. Like if you don't know what you're looking for and then you find it and you see like this, this little place, it, it reminded me at first of the, um, well, what was the little place that we did in Key West? The little hotel down oh, there. Oh, um, what was that place called? Yeah, uh, it was an episode from like two years ago. It was a long time ago. I don't remember. It wasn't, but the, I do remember it wasn't the what La you're talking Conca. about. It was, I can't remember. We do so many episodes. I know. Um, but it reminded me of that until I saw the other pictures. But it's a cool hotel. Mm. The rooms are, they're not the nicest rooms I've ever seen. I'm not going to lie. Okay. They look fine, though. They look fine. But this isn't like, you're not going there for uh, like a super upscale, you know, trip. It's very much like staying at a Holiday Inn I, I could compare it to. Okay. It's not bad. It's not, it's not great it's not bad the view is amazing i love it i was thinking like best western versus super eight yes there you go that that would work i mean you're not going to stay at the four seasons obviously but yeah it definitely looks like it's worth the stay and if any of the stories are true it kind of makes it worth it but Mm. there is an issue with that staying at the hotel what well i can't say yet because it's in the second half but but they do they do acknowledge the paranormal at this hotel they do not shy away from it Mm, they do okay. acknowledge it and there are so many paranormal claims at this hotel yay <laughs> this isn't going to be like last week where you know we're going to talk about a tour guide uh every story is paranormal in nature and right. the reviews are a plenty we could have done this whole episode just on reviews wow there's that many so i mean again a mining town is it the land though people lived here since 700 mm-hmm. you know probably before that uh, people died here in the mining little, you know, uh, the Mexican American war happened here. Yeah. Um, the old West, this is the old West. You know, we live in the old West. Wow. Wow. West. Yeah. yeah. This is not Will Smith. Okay. <laughs> this is not Will Smith, but, uh, it's very cool, but we do got to get in to some spooky stories. Do you remember when we did Alabama and we did the, uh, the Jemison mansion and the, the hospital over there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I said, man, Alabama is just like full of haunted stuff. Arizona is the West Coast Alabama. Okay. There is so okay. much paranormal stuff. Gotcha. Heck it yeah. Was, we so could, our kind of place. We could have just <laughs> been the Arizona Paranormal Podcast. Ooh. It's crazy. Wow. Now, Arizona is a well-known haunted place. Its unique culture and history have left behind a myriad of ghost stories that helped shape its culture. While locations believed to be haunted, like the Orpheum Theater, the Hotel Monte Vista, the Riordan Mansion, the Palace Saloon, the Hasayampa Inn, I'm sure you remember that Yeah, I do. The Gadsden Hotel, and so much more. It is no wonder people consider it, you ready? One of the most (laughs) haunted states in America. (sighs) Mm, We come across that so much, it just doesn't really mean anything anymore. I don't know, though, because if you think about Arizona... And all the stuff you've seen that's been in Arizona, Mm -hmm. I think maybe this might be the exception. Arizona may be the most haunted state because of the 
the Wild West and the the mining around it and stuff. I I think this could possibly be if there is one. This could be one of the most haunted sites, oh, and okay. I, this is one I, that I finally agree with. Wow, Alabama, I'm not so sure. I don't know how much Mary and your cousin makes uh, paranormal stuff, but <laughs> you know, sorry, That's fair. sorry, That's Bama. Fair. sorry, sorry, Alabama. <laughs> But there is one location that seems to stand out to many as the most haunted of them all. A place that even we have been asked to talk about more than once. Mm -hmm. The Jerome Grand Hotel in Jerome, Arizona. Now built on the very top of Cleopatra Hill, this huge five-story Spanish mission-style building is the highest public building in the entire Verde Valley. The building is made of concrete poured on in place on a 50 degree slope and still is considered an engineering feat to this day. Wow. So that was another interesting thing that I came across in the twenties. They managed to, to pour a foundation on a 50 degree slope. That's, that's crazy. That's nuts. That People, so they, don't, they don't really do stuff like that no. now because it's just too hard. Yeah. But they figured this out back in the twenties. The that's crazy. That is incredibly impressive. <laughs> yeah. And when I read that originally, I was very blown away by that because that is just, I don't know, man. That just seems, <laughs> I don't know how they did That's it. That's why. I would really love to know how they did it. Yeah. I mean, the form that they had to build for that must have been intense. While the upper floors house the guest rooms, the bottom floors house the hotel lobby, the gift shop, a high-end restaurant, and the hotel kitchen, which the asylum restaurant. You seem to like that a lot. Okay. Now, walking into the lobby is like walking into the 1920s era because they, they keep it kind of original. That's amazing. The decorum and furniture reflect the time period. The charming 1926 Otis elevator, which serves all five floors, is the oldest original self-service elevator in Arizona and is long known for its reliability. Wow. I'd have to look more into this. I'm wondering, is it one of maybe one of the oldest self-service elevators? You mean period? In America. Wow. Mm, that'd be very interesting to know. I should have looked sure. into that. I'm not, yeah. I'm not quite sure. In the beginning, Jerome Grand Hotel only had six rooms available. The rest of the rooms were still under construction and thus empty. And claims of strange happenings started coming in almost immediately after the hotel was opened. Guests would claim to hear voices coming from empty rooms, and there were even reports of what sounded like a hospital gurney riding down the hallways at night, but of course no one was there. Mm. The rest of this story is basically paranormal. I, I'm ready. This is, there's so, so much, there is so much. It is believed there are many ghosts at the hotel, but some of them are more notable than others. When the building was operating as a hospital, it is alleged that many people had died there. There are no official records available, but according to some, over 9,000 deaths occurred. And I'm sure with the land, it's probably way more than that. Absolutely. As the town was primarily a mining town, it is believed that most of the deaths were caused by mining accidents. But people also died of other injuries and illnesses. Now, we have covered a lot of hospitals from this time period, so we all know the amount of death that came with the times and it was shocking mm -hmm. you know because the medical practices are unbelievable yeah and brutal absolutely uh, very scary it's so scary i'm so glad i didn't live then <sighs> i don't even like needles and and don't come at me i have a lot of tattoos i understand this but it's different it is different it is very different the first during its time as a hospital is the bearded apparition and probably a miner or someone associated with the mining community now, this spirit was known to be a friendly entity who haunted the building for many years. He liked to appear on random floors and just visit with the living. Aww. He didn't want to be gone. He wants friends. Nothing here seems evil. Mm. Everything here seems very, very, kind of fun. I want to go. I want to go. <laughs> a night duty nurse at the time had just turned off the call lights and had returned downstairs. When she got back to her station, all the lights went back on again. Now, thinking it was the lone patient on this ward, there was one person. She went upstairs to scold the man, and it, but he was an invalid, who she found in bed where he was supposed to be. And the invalid told the nurse that the bearded man, he glided down the hall, turning all the lights on. Oh, 
<laughs> just gave me goosebumps. <laughs> Dude, so these stories wow. start back in the hospital days. Yeah. They're not even, this. we haven't even, we're, we're decades and decades and decades away from hotel time. Wow. Stories have been flooding in since the 20s about paranormal activity at this hospital, which leads me to believe that, I'm not saying that some of the stuff now isn't from the hospital. Right. Obviously, because it's a hospital. But maybe it was during some of the mining, you know, days where Mm -hmm. mining accidents happened a lot. Or the land before that, you know, there could have been people buried there. Who knows? Right. I'm I'm old enough to know you don't mess with Indian burial, burial grounds, you know. This is true. In another occurrence, a nurse was about to leave a floor. When she saw a bearded man out of bed standing at the very end of the hall. When she quickly approached him, the apparition just disappeared. And guests at the hotel have claimed to see the bearded man and evidence of his presence on the floor, especially the second and third floors. Wow. And this, he's still seen today. That's amazing. One of the most common sounds heard in any busy hospital is the first cry of a newborn baby. Guests of the hotel frequently report the sound of an infant crying. Callers have reported the sound to hotel staff, claiming to hear it coming from a neighboring room, only to learn that the room had not been occupied. Aww, little babies. I mean, could you imagine? It's hard to have a baby now. Yeah. Could you imagine having a baby in the 20s? Uh, no, thank you. I mean, no, thank you. It's, it, it's only so common now that everything turns out okay because they figured it out. But, yeah. you know, at its core... Those, child, are the child, times that, those are the times that they were figuring it out. Childbirth is not uh, safe. It's it's safe, but it's not safe. It's the most natural thing known to man, but mm. it is not. It's hard. It's it hard is. on the body. Yeah. Now, the ghost of a little six-year-old boy is claimed to appear to guests on the third floor. He smiles and then disappears. Very common occurrences, which happen daily as reported by the guests, are footsteps going up and down the halls and stairs, fans which turn off and on by themselves, and locked doors unlocking by themselves during the evening hours. A guest in room 32 watched in fascinated horror as the bathroom door in his room quietly opened and then just closed by itself. Stop. Maybe the ghost had to poop. <laughs> I don't know. If it was a little boy, you maybe just want to take a little bath, you know? I never know. Never know. Uh, no, little boys don't want to take baths. You know this. <laughs> you have to. I do. Maids cleaning the empty rooms and hallways seem to be the favorite targets for some teasing entities who like to get some chuckles at the living's expense. Mm. However, when the maids tell them to stop, the teasing subsides for a couple of days. So they listen. So they're super nice. That's what I'm saying. Super nice ghosts. That's that's what I'm saying. Like when I was finding all this, I'm like, this is so strange that because usually the things that make places popular are, you know, like these evil entities. Yeah. But this like the demons and the, you know, this like, all this blah. This is like haunted Disney. But I would <laughs> like to think that most hauntings are like this, you know? I mean, because we've said it in the past, like these, they're ghosts. But if we believe that they're ghosts, mm-hmm. that they, they were once people. So they're people. Yeah, and absolutely. And not everybody was a an evil demon. Yeah, you know, not so. everybody was like a grumpy person for their entire life. That's what I'm who saying. Who just wants to take it out on everybody so after. This to me makes more sense that you would have ghosts that are like messing with people. Yeah. You know, like, just, oh, I want to mess with you because I know it kind of creeps you out, but yeah. you're going to tell me to stop and I'll be like, okay. That's I'll what I'm stop. saying. <laughs> now, maids have allegedly heard someone calling their names when they were completely alone on the floor. Doors to the rooms and closet doors have slammed shut on them. One unseen entity didn't like the loud vacuum in the hallway and rudely rushed by the maid in the form of a strong, cold, unseen presence nearly pushing her over. It's a strong ghost. He can't yell stop. I mean, what else? Really? I mean, are you sure? Because they seem to be able to say their names. I mean, true. I don't know. Maybe not loud enough over the vacuum. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, maybe. Now, the most popular of all the rooms available for guests to retire after an evening of ghost hunting is room 32. The room is well known as the most haunted room in the hotel after having been the location of not one, but two grisly suicides. Mm. One man leapt from the balcony to his death, while another man turned his gun on himself. Guests who dare attempt sleep in this room are awoken by the sounds of doors opening by themselves and of water streaming from faucets that apparently just turned on themselves full blast. Mm. Hotel employees who sit in the lobby sign and desk area seem to have plenty of unseen company. 
The lobby doors have been known to just open and close on their own as if someone was just leaving or entering. Mm. So there's no place in this hotel that doesn't seem to have right. something. Supposedly, one employee was sitting at the desk when she heard a commotion in the gift shop. She discovered that the contents of the shelves were just flying off by themselves, landing on the floor. Oh my! And God. that's poltergeist activity. It is. So, I don't know that that one wow. is very different from all the other ones. Mm-mm. Because we haven't talked about. I mean, I guess maybe the water turning on, or, or the, but this is very. Yeah, because that's that falls in. Yeah. The, the, you know. But this is this activity. is very poltergeisty. Yeah. Stuff being thrown around. Oh yeah. Another employee had arranged the chairs in the lobby right in front of the main desk, and she turned her back to attend to something else. When she turned around again, the chairs had been moved back. Oh, my God. <laughs> again, that's very poltergeist activity. Wow. It uh, re- reminds me of that really fake Mind Seed video. Oh, look at this. What's up? Do not turn off. And it's locked. Why would they want somebody to turn off? Holy sh! You see the chairs? Oh! My oh. God. Everything's swinging too. Oh shit! Look at the light. Oh, the light's swinging, huh? Like something just ran oh. down the center of that, or towards us. That we watched, oh, with the that chairs we saw, being yeah, stacked. it was yeah. so bad, so bad. Another employee sitting at the desk watched in shock as the posted plaque of the hotel's rules lifted itself off the nail that it was hanging on and flew to the middle of the lobby carpet. Intense. What? The main desk in the lobby often gets phone calls from empty rooms, and the apparition of an old lady dressed in a fine white dress. It's also appeared in the stairwell next to the elevator. Wow. Lady in a white dress. There's always one. Yeah, that is always kind of like the most commonly seen yep. apparition for there's some reason. There's always one. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing better than a hot lady in a white dress. Or like guy to top Or a black hat. dress. Or a red dress. Any dress? I like you in dresses. Thanks. And I don't I, wear them. No, uh, no, never. You've, <laughs> you've, I've seen you in a dress a couple times. Yeah, a couple. In We've been together for almost, years? almost, it's been almost 13 years now. I know. I've seen you in a dress, I think. Three times. Like four, maybe five. Our wedding, your friend's wedding, and I think you wore one one night when we went out to appease me. My sister's wedding. Okay. Her rehearsal. Yeah, but you were like super pregnant. Nobody cares about this. Nobody cares about this. In 1936, the hospital's fireman engineer, Claude M. Harvey, well known by everyone in town as Scotty, was found dead in the basement when the elevator pinned him to the ground, crushing his head. Oh my God. Now, the elevator was in perfect working order and Scotty was not suicidal, which leaves the possibility that Scotty was actually murdered. Unfortunately, there were no CSI units back then and no forensic evidence was available to build a case against anyone, though there were several theories and suspects. Oh my God. So they- That is awful. Well, people believe that Scotty was murdered. Mm. But, you know, it's hard it, It's hard to solve a murder back then. Yeah. I don't even know how they how ever you did. Attempt it? Yeah. That's why a lot of people back then got locked up who were innocent. Yeah. Now, someone perhaps got away with murder, which may have caused Claude M. Harvey to haunt the building, especially the hallways, lobby, stairs, and basement area. And some say he won't rest until the truth is known about his death, which was seemingly a murder. Tell him, Claude. Tell there, him. He's the most well-known, I believe. There are a number of paranormal occurrences attributed to Claude M. Harvey. Lights in the elevator shaft have been seen, and I don't mean like lights that flicker on and off, I mean like- Like floating lights. Floating lights. lights. Okay. The sound of the creaking iron elevator has long been heard throughout the building, even when the elevator was up at the top floor, not being used when the building was vacant. Mm. Crazy. He's like, hello, I was murdered here. It's, I'm sorry, Scotty, it's, it's, too much time has passed. We're never going to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, enjoy your stay at the Jerome Grand Hotel. The shadowy figure of a man has been seen in the basement, on the stairs, and in other parts of the hotel, often with an angry demeanor, making the living uncomfortable, but never actually hurting anyone. So he might be the only, like, angry one. Yeah. But he doesn't do anything. He's just like, he's yelling, like, hey, someone say that I was well, murdered. I don't know if this is Scotty. It mm-hmm. could be. It could be. It makes sense. It's in the same area. Yeah. Um, 
So I don't know. Maybe you could be right on that one. I'm not sure, but it doesn't do anything to anybody. It's just like I'm here. Yeah. Look at me. Look at me. Hello. Employees sitting at the lobby desk have felt an angry glare from a presence standing on the stairs. The feeling becomes so strong that they look up and see this shadowy figure. And after being seen, it retreats back up the stairs. It's like, oh, you saw me. I run, run away. Okay. Oh, that's what I'm saying. So, you actually like, saw me. It's how scary is that? It's not, but you know that feeling when someone's watching you and you're just like, where are they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. but you feel it. You know it. It's, it reminds me of the uh, the angry monkey and Family Guy. That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> now, in addition to ghosts, guests and staff have reported strange experiences, such as lights and TV switching on and off on their own. TVs and table lamps are also known to un- just unplug themselves. And unknown cell phones and camcorders have been found dead center under the bed or on top of the bed. Mm. Remember that. Assorted items have gone flying across hotel rooms with no explanations. Now, I, I didn't want you to be able to read this next part. There's one more. Oh, okay. And if all that isn't enough, the hotel is even said to be home to the ghostly form of a feline. <gasps> Numerous guests have reported feeling a ghost of a cat brushing up against their leg, leaving an imprint on the bed linens from its cat nap. And one guest even captured the phantom feline in a photograph. And the picture was framed, and it's still up on the front desk of the hotel. A kitty? A kitty. Ghost Aww. kitty. Ghost kitty. Stop. I think that's super kind of cool. That is so cool. Now, those two things, though. Remember the ghost cat. Mm-hmm. Remember people's cell phones being found dead in center. Dead center. Okay. Now, with all those claims, we still obviously felt the need to see what people who have visited the hotel have to say. And this is what we found. And these, again, I'll make my statement at, at the end. Okay. In March 2024 on TripAdvisor.com, someone named Cheryl M. wrote, quote, Stayed at the Jerome Grand Hotel for my mom's 89th birthday, and it was perfect. The rooms are a good size, and we had a great view. Loved the blend of old and modern. Now, the elevator is fun to operate. Light breakfast included is a nice nice touch. Haunted? Maybe. We heard scratching on the window, even though there was nothing near it to make a noise. We had purchased a bottle of mead in Prescott and did not have a corkscrew, so went to the Asylum restaurant, and they were very accommodating to open the bottle for me. And there's your first. Okay. Very light. Happy birthday, Mom. Very light. (laughs) Yeah, she just turned 89. This was actually this year. Yep. But they did hear something, and nothing was there. So Hmm. who knows? Maybe a branch, right? Yeah. Just maybe a branch. Maybe. In September 2022 on TripAdvisor.com, someone named Patty S. wrote, quote, We stayed one night at the Grand Hotel in Jerome, a hotel on site of an old hotel where 9,000 people died, which she got wrong. It's a hospital, but I left it in because that's how she wrote it. It's said to be haunted, especially room 32. We stayed in that very room. Comfy room with vintage furnishing, AC, and TV, full bath. I didn't expect any paranormal activity, but around 4 a.m. I woke up in the dark room and I looked around. To my right, I saw a bright orb of light streak by me and disappear. Shortly after, I felt something soft and furry press against my foot. I thought it was my husband, but it was too furry to be him, and he was not lying very close to me. I heard of the ghost cat other guests had heard and felt in their bed. I like cats and just fell back asleep. Interesting evening. Now, the thing about that is that we rarely find reviews that coincide with actual stories like yeah from places so yeah. i f- was like wow that's uh that says something mm. that's not the only one though it's not gonna be the only one tell me more in august 2020 on tripadvisor.com someone named pathfinder 425916 wrote quote just stayed one night to do the ghost tour cool haunted hotel although didn't experience anything paranormal My daughter, who was in room 33, did say that she heard an old-fashioned typewriter all night long. But I was in 31, so I'm not sure. Front desk was very nice and pleasant. Parking is a challenge. Mm. So, weird. Typewriter all night. Hearing an old typewriter all night. That's very distinct sound, too. So, like, you couldn't... Someone typing on a laptop... No, it's not going to be the same. Totally different. Yeah, because they from a because typewriter. the old typewriters have the keys that smack the paper. Yep. So it's very it is a very unique sound. Yeah, you hear the button being pushed and then the button the letter the hammer, letter yeah, the hitting. Hammer hit. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's it's a very distinct sound. Mm-hmm. 
And one more in October 2017 on TripAdvisor.com. Someone named Kyleen2020 wrote, which I think is a really cool name for some reason. Kyleen? Yeah. Quote, I have stayed at Jerome Grand Hotel twice now, and I can say for sure it is haunted. Mm. I do recommend the ghost tours. Now, they have ghost equipment where you can communicate with the ghost. There was a graveyard, haunted high school, and an old prison. I stayed in room 32, which is said to be the most haunted room in the entire hotel. Apparently, there was a nurse who used to take patients and insert a needle into their temples with a disease, which I found nowhere else, I'm not going to lie. Around 11 p.m., I started to get a very painful headache on the side of my temple. Also, I was talking about how I needed to use the restroom. In that very room, a patient shot himself in the head in the bathroom. When I got up to use the restroom, an anomaly passed by the door like it didn't want me to go in there. The TV wouldn't work for the longest time, and the batteries in our phones kept dying. The door slammed at one point. The last, most frightening thing that happened that night was finding my cell phone dead center in the middle of the bed when I woke up that next morning. Mm. End quote. Interesting. Another one. Interesting. That goes with the claims. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Today, Jerome Grand Hotel, it still operates, obviously. And due to the privacy of guests, you're not actually allowed to wander the guest floors. The lobby and the hotel restaurant called the Asylum are open to the public. There's a notebook at the lobby desk filled with paranormal experiences of guests. They have filled five 300-page notebooks since 1996. So there's definitely something going on in the Jerome Grand Hotel. What? Mm. Five 300-page <laughs> notebooks. That's 15... That's uh, 1,500 that's pages a of a paranormal of accounts. Wow. That's I, impressive. So, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to say how what we think, but obviously people think something's happening here. Right. That is probably, that is the most stories about one place I've ever heard of. I would love to get my hands on some of these and mm. read them. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that would be super cool. Yeah. Because I could just only imagine what people have said about this place. I mean, if we can't go and, like, explore the guest floors... You could just go and read notebooks in the lobby yeah, and yeah. see if anything happens. I don't know if they leave them all out. I'm sure they have one out, at least, the one that's currently being, being used. used yeah. But I don't know if they, I mean, that would be really be cool if they kept them all out. But then yeah. you risk, like, people damaging them. I mean, you can laminate them. Just saying. Oh, boy, that's a lot of lamination. I don't care. Yeah, I want to read them. That's why it's your <laughs> job, not mine, to laminate things. <laughs> <laughs> I am the laminator. You are. <laughs> it sounds like a superhero name. I'm the laminator. <laughs> But the Jerome Grand Hotel, I mean, it's been around. And while it can't really be backed up, it is claimed that 9,000 people died there just mm -hmm. in the hospital days. And who who knows? I mean, for the time that the hotel was running and like the medical practices back then, I could definitely see that being a thing, especially being a mining town with injuries and accidents and, you know, things like that. Dude, the hotel's only been open for 30 years. Yeah. And this is the 30th anniversary and we're doing it. I just Ooh. thought about that. <laughs> yeah. It was, hey, that's weird. I just thought about that. So happy 30th anniversary, Jerome Yay. Grand Hotel. You should give us complimentary tickets so we can come stay there. <laughs> but, I mean, a very interesting place. And, uh, again, it's it's going to be very subjective on how you feel about the views and the rooms and all that. I like it. I mm -hmm. think it looks really awesome, honestly. I'm excited to and see I it. And I love the old Spanish-style building. And it yeah. just it looks like something out of the Old West. I think it's really cool. But it's a lot of history. Yeah. Uh, some things happened. Uh, some things. <laughs> most impressive to me are that people's reviews on... Like TripAdvisor and other websites specifically coincide with claims that have happened there. Yeah, they actually match up. That is very impressive yeah. to me. So there's only one thing left to do. Okay. You don't seem confused enough yet, though. I'm not. Yeah, we'll find out. Is it real? So, Megan, when it comes to the Jerome Grand Hotel, which I keep tripping up on, I don't, it's killing me. <laughs> Jerome Grand and Hantel. They're. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to pick from here. There is. There's a lot. It really comes down to what do you think? Do you think this hotel is haunted? I do. Okay. I do think this place is haunted. That is the fastest you think something's haunted that I, I've ever heard. I, I just, there are so many things that surround this place. 9,000 deaths, a hospital, many things before the hospital alleged was even deaths. there. You got to just, you know, you got to be accurate. Yeah. Alleged. alleged. Sorry. Sorry. 
<laughs> so, uh, you know, th- all the things that happened on the land before, I mean, this is just a culmination of everything that we talk about that makes things have the potential to be haunted. Mm-hmm. It It's all here. Oh, yeah. All of it. And then the stories aligning for the experiences that people have. And I just, yes, absolutely yes on this one. So what about you? I, yeah. I okay. think it's on it. And the I'm I'm going to say for me the strongest thing is the people's reviews that actually go hand in hand with the exact accounts that are claimed to be here. That to me speaks louder than anything else. Agreed. Because we often see things where uh they're just like the nothing matches. Mm-hmm. You know, everything seems out of left field, but this is way different. People have are talking about the ghost cat. Yeah. And talking about things ending up on the center of the bed. And to me, I don't know that that says a lot. So I'm going to give it a yes, which means <gasps> that this week it's going to get the big old seal of approval. All right. Yay. Uh, if you want us to do, you, you got to listen to it over on the video. <laughs> I don't know. I'll throw it in here too. But uh, yeah, I, uh, that's the, the Jerome Grand Hotel. That was so good. So if you're around. I thoroughly enjoyed that. So we say this about almost every location. If you've been there or you have an experience, write it into us. Yeah. I would love to hear your experience because this place seems really, really amazing. This probably quickly became one of my favorite episodes. Uh, I really, really enjoyed I this I would place. love to visit this hotel and it just so happens i mean it's not close but we don't live super far from it yeah so Lindsay and mikey thank you so much thank you for doing listener requests thanks for giving my wife a reason to look this nice for me (laughs) but uh yeah i guess that's gonna be it that's so good you know what a interesting interesting play i could have made this super long i'm sure i did not uncover all of the claims honestly they're the internet just go look up this hotel and just start going through stuff. I When I looked up the reviews, mm-hmm. normally I have to dig and dig and dig and dig. Right. And not with this one. They were just everywhere. Not not with this one. I didn't have to go to any other websites or anything. Wow. There were so many to pick from mm. that, I mean, it was just so easy. This this thing just wrote itself. You know, it just, this episode just put itself together, so... Yay! Thank you, Jerome Grand Hotel, <laughs> for making me for giving me an easy week. I appreciate that. Yay! Finally. But uh, where can they find us? Well, they can find us on Instagram at for the booze underscore podcast and on Facebook at for the booze. That's right. And you can also find us on X at for the booze right here on YouTube at for the booze and over on TikTok at for the booze. And one thing I want to add is this morning I decided to make our own Facebook group. Yay! So if you're interested and you just want to come over and have a place to, you know, hang out and talk to us, or if you want to be able to suggest locations or episode ideas or anything, anything involving the show, by all means, please come and join. It's it's a Facebook group, and I just named it For the Booze Podcast, so it's easy to find. And if any of our Patreons would like to be an admin, please let, let me know. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that and a Patreon. Patreon. Patreon.com yes, Patreon. forward slash for the booze. Uh, we have to thank some folks. Four people now. Four Patreons. That's right. We are going mm-hmm. to thank uh, Joe, Joe, the man, Matter. I don't know what to say. I'm just going to, first thing that comes to mind, Teresa, oh my gosh, O'Donnell. Thank you. <laughs> Tina, help me out here. <laughs> No, this is you. This is your doing, not me. <laughs> this is my- <laughs> not me. You wanted to keep Fine. this going. Tina, the magnificent Madot. There you go. And Jen, the... You know, for now, I'm going to hit you with the, the decision maker level new member of the Patreon, Kim. Because she joined the top tier. And... We appreciate it. We think you're top tier, so it makes sense. <laughs> and I am. Yes, thank you for joining us. And we will see you over there on Behind the Booze, where we do our oh, yeah. extra episode. Which we get to go record here in a minute. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm going to read your message um, that I already asked you to, and you said it was okay, from Byberry. She knows this place. I'm going to read it at the opening of the next episode. Yay! So make sure you come back for that, because it's very interesting, I think, what she has to say. Is very interesting to me because it says a lot about what we decided we thought about it at the end. Okay. So, 
If you have a listener suggestion, uh, if you have a listener story that you'd like us to read on here, mm-hmm. or you just want to say, hey, what's up? I mean, if you want to hit on her, that's fine. She's mine, but you can do it. But uh, send those in to forthebiz12 at gmail.com. That's right. And uh, I think this is it. I think this is where we're going to end it. I think that was everything. So go ahead and take us out. Well, thank you, everybody, so much for listening. And we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Don't sleep with your toes out from underneath the covers in room 32.